Okay, may the demo gods be with me. Um, let's start. I, I must say, wow, it's a big turnout. Um, my name is Frank. Uh, some of you may know me as, uh, as Secubus on Twitter and some of the other stuff I do. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about uh, Secubus. And to show you what it's all about, I, I want to tell this story about two guys. Um, this guy called C. Lulis, or any other name you choose to give him, and Brie Wrightlet. So um, they've both given, been given a task to perform a weekly vulnerability scan of all their public IP addresses of their company. And C. Lulis decided to just use a regular vulnerability scanner which means that he has to get up um, at a rather awkward time. I think this is the time I went to bed yesterday and was a bit shaky, as you can see. Um, he has to manually start his scan and then just wait for it to finish. Um, then when the scan is finished, he actually has to yeah, recuperate a little bit, analyze the report in the morning, and yeah, that's not good for you. It's, it's, it's like doing DEF CON parties. Um, be right, let decides to use Secubus. So he, he spends his morning setting it up. Um, then he actually goes home. <laughs> he relaxes a bit, and the scanning happens at night. So I'm just going to let the scanning happen. And when he wakes up in the morning, he can just actually look at his findings and remediate. So what is the problem we're trying to solve here? If you do vulnerability scans with Nessus, and can I see a raise of hand who here does vulnerability scanning with Nessus? Wow. Um, who actually scans the same infrastructure more than once? Yeah, and it doesn't seem to be designed to do that actually. Um, so it's, it's a good vulnerability scanner. I don't think it's too expensive. If you don't use it commercially, it's actually free. Um, but it generates quite a bit, big report that you have to go through every time. And scanning is not very quick. It takes time. It's not automated. And you spend about four times as much time analyzing your stuff than you actually do scanning. And then you get the results in the GUI and, well, it's not very good, the GUI. Um, so I think the work risk ratio if you want to do regular scanning is off. Um, Secubus is a wrapper around Nessus OpenVAS, um, and it has a web GUI that's geared towards ticking off the findings. So it's actually designed to say, okay, let's go through these findings. Which ones have I done? Which ones haven't I got done? And it compares consecutive scans. Currently, it supports the following scanners Nessus OpenVAS, Nikto, and there's more to follow. And what do we do differently? Well, first of all, we start the scans from the command line, which means you can hook them up to cron tab, which means you can stay in bed to do your scanning. Um, we store the findings in a database. Currently, I regard the file system as being a database, and that will change in the future. And we present stuff through the web GUI. So what just happened when I clicked dem uh, do scan demo, it actually started a Nessus client, which went out to a Nessus daemon, which is running on this PC. Um, it's scanning one of my targets. This is one of my target. And let me pull up the other target. So that might be an interesting scan. And let me see if it's, it's still running. Everything runs on VMware on my laptop. Um, so every now and then we'll probably have to, um, I have to speak slower and make the timing work better. Um, it is actually scanning. Yeah. Yeah, it's still scanning. Okay, so what happened when I clicked the do, uh, the do scan command? Uh, there's a configuration file that was parsed, which tells me where does the scanner live, uh, what password and username to use. I'm not going to put that on the screen. Um, where do my binaries live, etc. And then the client is started. So, and hey, we finished. So now is demo time. This is actually the Secubus GUI, and there's a couple of scans here. Um, I just did the demo scan, like I said, with the do scan demo. And 
And there's a couple of things that we can see here. We see that the scan just ran at, uh, at this date at an interesting time because my time zones are different. Um, and you can actually get the, uh, the Nessus HTML report. If it still supported XML, you could get the XML report, but it doesn't anymore. And the NB output, which is actually uh, rather interesting to us. And then if I click on changes, I got the same output as I just got on the command line. So, but that's not the, in the interesting thing. The interesting thing is here with the statuses. So I click on new. Let me see if I can take that a little bit. Is that still readable? Barely. Um, so you can filter. There's filter capabilities in here. So I can look at all the, all the findings from the XP host and see that it's actually a really old XP installation. So I want, clearly don't want this in my network. So I change the status here. I say it's an open risk. Put a little comment in. Select all the findings and do a bulk update. And this actually sets the status of all the findings that I just selected to, to open, meaning there's a risk. Now I've got another host, which is a web server. And that web server has a couple of ports, so you can also filter on port. Uh, it's got port 21 open with anonymous FTP. Now for the sake of the demo, I'm going to assume that that's actually a, um, a policy violation. So. Um, So no anonymous FTP allowed. Bulk update that. Go to the SSH port and I know that's okay because I've run this demo before. And then when I go to port 80 there's one finding that's actually of interest of me so I'm going to click that open. Um, it's a trace enable off that's not set in the configuration so I'll mark this as open. Let me refresh that. And all the other findings is no issue. And then there's a couple of others which are uh, of no interest. So that's a quick rundown of the findings. Uh, let me set out to actually fix them as well. So. Stopping the FTP daemon. And yeah, let's fix this one as well. Guess that's the best fix for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the interest of time, I'll wait for this to die and then start a new scan. Okay, so. Let's go to week two. Um, we've got Mr. C. Lulas again, again doing a scan at 4 a.m., um, not liking it very much that he has to wait for it, sleeping in the office again, and sleeping the rest of the day as well because he's just too naked to do it. And, and you could wonder if you look at the results and you do the printout of the two Nessus reports if it's really worth it because you've got this big report that you got to read and it'll be subtly different from from the um, report of last week. I mean, who can spot the five differences here? You can? Let's see if you got them right. Yeah. So, B right lat, he's decided to do it a little bit differently um, since, well, he already got his scan, uh, scan configured. He can actually go home straight away, uh, relax there a little bit. Uh, wait for the scan to happen at night and wake up in the morning and happily analyze his, uh, his, his work again. So what's the trick? How do I compare the two scans? 
I just showed you the, the M quickly showed you the uh, NBE output, the Nessus backend file. And it's actually a very simple file format um, and, and a little bit broken here and there. Um, there's a type field, so it will be a result or it will be uh, a timing or it will be an info. And timing and info are just ignored. We're really only interested in the results. Then there's a network, and it seems that Tenable thinks that everything that's between dots, the first three things that are between dots, is actually a network, which is very interesting if you're scanning some www.something.co.uk, because I think the network is www.something.co. Um, it gets the IP address, and then the plugin ID, port, um, priority, and uh, the output of the plugin. If the port scanner finds something, it's actually not going to, uh, to bother with the uh, last three fields and cut it off. So I take that output, um, take, the, uh, take it and put it into a, uh, a tree into memory and store that on the disk as well. Um, and that tree structure you can really easily use to compare your previous scan with your current scan. And then it's all about the status I just showed you. So new means it wasn't in the previous scan, it is in the current scan. Changed means it was in the previous scan, it's in the current scan as well, but it changed a little bit. Now we're being a little bit more intelligent than that because uh, output that has got timestamps in it, we actually ignore that the timestamp changed because that's expected behavior. And gone means it was in the previous scan, it's not there. And then as a user you assign your statuses. So in the previous example, um, we assigned just assigned open and no issue, meaning it's a risk, it's not a risk. We can assign fix, meaning it's gone, I'm happy it's gone. And we can assign hard mast, and hard mast means don't bother me with this finding ever again. Um, and by default, there's two findings in Nessus, um, the trace route and the uh, Nessus configuration uh, information that I by default put in hard mast uh, category because it's, uh, yeah, just fluff. So then the, the machine assigned statuses, um, you get hard mod, well, no, just skip that slide. The whole idea behind it is, well, if it is okay, if it was okay in the past, it didn't change, why would you bother a human with it? The cycle that this fits in is a cycle of scanning your infrastructure, comparing it automatically, then you get the system assigned statuses of new, changed, and gone, and then as a human you go and assess it and assign the issue, no issue statuses. And then you go and fix your findings and scan again. So let's see if we've got a result already. Yeah, it's done. Cool. So. I click on the demo again and you'll see that the counters are different. There's only three new findings this time. There's four findings that have changed and there's 30 findings that have gone. So if I click on the gone findings and I look by host, surprisingly enough, there's 24 findings of the XP host gone because it gone off, got offline. So glad it's gone, market is fixed and we're done here. The web server, um, well, we shut down the FTP daemon, so all the findings related to that are gone. Happy with that. And there's the one finding that we wanted to kill, which is also gone. So that's good. Then let's clear the filters. There's four findings that have changed. Um, one of them is, the direct, is to have banner detection on the web server. And we can see here that it's now disclosing its entire uh, pedigree. It's, it's telling you who it is, what modules it's got installed, exact version numbers, the whole, uh, yeah, the whole lot. And the little section here is actually the diff of the two findings. So what, yeah, what are the actual changes? So while fixing one finding, they actually introduce another one. So this needs to be fixed. Let me just refresh that list. Um, then this is actually all the same issue. It's all about the banners and that's a pattern that you see quite often is that there's one little thing wrong with your infrastructure and you see it back in three or four findings. So let's just all mark this as open. Mm. 
Moving along to the new findings, um, well, it now knows that it's got web dev running, so it marks that as a finding. Um, security backported, I don't care. Um, name of the distribution, yeah, it's all related to, to the informa extra information disclosure. So let me go around again and do a quick change on the system. Fail. Yeah. And let's actually restart the demo again. Demo scan. So going on to week three, who wants to guess what Mr. C. Lulas does? Well, he uses his sender scanner, gets up early, sleeps in the office, then waits for it to finish, sleeps under his desk, analyzes his results in the and, and yeah, analyzes a big fucking report in the morning. Be right lad, use a succubus. So again, he just goes home, has a good time, plays some pinball, scans the stuff at night, wakes up in the morning, and happily can analyze and remediate his, uh, his findings. Now, one of the questions I get a lot is, is what's the name about? Um, it's been asked a couple of times, so I tried to insert it in, in the presentation. Um, it's not about the succubus. That's a demon that comes and uh, has sex with male guys and, to, and wears them out. It's something like that, because everything you do should lead to more sex. Um, the insecubus is, is its distant cousin. It's a cousin of the succubus. It's the female cousin of the succubus. Um, the insecubus is the male cousin of the succ succubus, and it actually tries to wear security people out by making them read the same report over and over again. Secubus, on the other hand, tries to wear the vulnerabilities and system administrators out by keeping the, keep reminding them that um, there are vulnerabilities out there in the network and you should fix your shit and it doesn't actually cost me as the security guy a lot of time to, uh, to keep reminding you that. It costs you time to, uh, to deal with me. Um, like the succubus, it's a creature of the night or any other time you choose it to schedule. So. Let's see if it's actually already finished. No, that would be too soon. Yeah, let me, let me go on by, by telling you how we use it in, in, our, in the company I work for. We provide mission critical outsourcing services to companies like banks and energy trading floors and online shops. So we really wanted to, to scan all our external IP addresses regularly. And yeah, the thing is it's a regular, it's, it's big companies. Um, so what we do is we scan, uh, I started writing Secubus at uh, somewhere in 2007. And I did a measurement in 2009 uh, and I was scanning a total of 4,000 IP addresses. And that resulted in a total of over eight and a half thousand Nessus findings. Um, so, who wants to have a guess at how long that took to analyze every month? A month? A month? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's what we're trying to avoid. <laughs> uh, I could actually do it in with the amount of change we have. I could analyze this stuff in about a day and a half. So that's quite a quite a big reduction. Uh, we're not the only ones uh, using it. Um, it's used by a Dutch provider of virtual hosting services, a science institute, um, at, yeah, some, some uh, defense contractors, and, and some other uh, companies that use this as well. Uh, the community is growing. Um, it would be very nice if you told me you use it so I can have actually know that what I do makes sense. Um, yeah, let's go see. Ah, demo's finished. So I'm not going to go through, don't worry, I'm not going to go through the old ticking off again, but just to show you that the amount of findings, there's the four findings that changed, which were the ones that changed when we put the header in and now we're taking the header out again. And there's another three findings that are gone. So you can see it really winding down. It's, it's taking less and less time to, uh, to analyze these, uh, these findings. 
So recapping, if you want to be masochistic and you want to continue using, just using your scanner and the standard reporting capabilities, it means you have to get up early. You have to look at non-informative stuff like trace routes every month. Um, you yeah, get a lot of boring, repetitive work. And I don't know about you, but I hate that shit. I like to do interesting stuff, like to actually deal with the, with the issues at hand. And it means you got a lot of work even if your infrastructure did not change. Um, on the other hand, if you use Secubus monthly, weekly, um, whatever you like, it means you're sca you can schedule your scans. Um, you only have to look at the findings that need your attention. Um, it means you have less errors because you got less repetitive work to do. And you get a better balance between the amount of changes in your network and the amount of work that you do. And if a network changes frequently, it means that there's uh, actually a bigger security risk as well. So by cleverly comparing stuff that's relevant, um, you can actually cut quite a lot of fat out of the uh, analysis process. So why did we choose to, to release the tool as open source? Well, it was because we needed it. First of all, we built it just to make our own lives easier and then we decided, okay, we use a lot of open source software, let's give something back to the community. So it's GPL version 2 if you want to use it. So what's ahead for future versions of the product? Um, well, we want to put in a database backend. Using the file system is maybe convenient and easy to program, but it becomes a hassle once your program grows and it actually gets slower and slower when you store more and more findings. It will also be easier to make a link between findings and issues. Issues is something we'll introduce in version two, which will mean, uh, okay, I've made this configuration mistake and it shows up in four findings. There's other findings that actually uh, show more, uh, more issues. Uh, we want to support more scanners. Uh, we're going to support Nikto in version 1.5. Uh, we want to support Nmap in version 2.0. Uh, Metasploit and Metasploit Express in version 2.1. And I'm really, one of the reasons I'm here is to solicit your opinions about what other shit we should include and, and be compatible with. Uh, we plan to make it a more open architecture with things like maybe pluggable authentication, maybe trouble ticketing integration, and more reporting. Um, things like graphs, dashboards, audit trails, uh, who did what, trends over time. I don't know what you guys need, tell me. Um, our ultimate goal, well we failed at it this year, um, is actually to become sort of a middle hub for, for this kind of information. So get everything in, analyze it, uh, and be the platform to use to analyze and report on this stuff. If you want to do that, we need your help. Uh, well, as you cl could clearly see, we need inter user interface designers, because I suck at that. Um, but people who want to code, people who get us requirements, um, reports designers, testers, and people to use it. Um, now speaking of help, I was bitching to, to Jebra over there about um, Metasploit Express integration at the speaker's party, was it two days ago? So he said, no worries, I'll do that for you. So I got up in the morning and saw, okay, time to write some code. And I'm like, let's, let's, let's tease him a little bit. Are you finished yet? Well, he said he, I need some sample output, so I suggested that he get in contact with Rapid7. <laughs> um, and then a couple of hours later, I see something like generating XML test data, so i like, oh my god, I have to change my slides now. <laughs> so I go to the uh, 10,000 cent hacker pyramid, Guess who's sitting there not having done, not having completed that yet. But halfway through the pyramids, all tests are passing. And this morning he tweets that he will be releasing his beta. And I made a promise that I would actually change my slides. So there you go, Jebra. He's Jebra, he codes in Perl. So yeah, Metasploit Express integration in version uh, 2.0.
actually today we'll be releasing uh, version uh, 1.5. Um, it should be up on our site in 15-20 minutes uh, depending on, on the length of Q&A. Um, and it will include NICTO scanning. Um, I, um, I talked to Chris Sulo and I said, listen, you really need MBE output for, for NICTO and he wasn't, yeah, so I decided to do it for him. I wrote him a module that actually outputs uh, MBE. So version 2.1.3 which was released before DEF CON so I could make this announcement. Thanks for that. Um, he as, that's actually the version that you need and I've got another demo of that. So on the virtual machines I've got that web that other web server running here. So that's the one we'll be scanning and I created a new scan configuration for it. So do the demo Nikto scan and it's, uh, it's running in the background. Other stuff we put in there, uh, we heard about people that it's, it's actually hard to install so I got a colleague of mine, uh, Peter Slotweg, to actually create a RPM for it so you can install it on, on Fedora based systems. Compliance, um, yeah, some of us actually have to deal with compliance and um, it's nice that you can actually get that Nessus output in there as well. The difference between normal output and compliance output is that normal output comes on one line for each finding and the compliance output is a lot of lines per finding so I had to find a way to deal with it. And like I said, the Nikto scanning, so let's see what that looks like if it's finished. Um, yeah, good question. Um, there is support for different locations in uh, the scanning engines that work with, uh, with client server architecture. So Nest is an open vast, you, you talk with a client to it. In each scan you can uh, have a separate configuration. So you could say I only want to port scan this and I only want to do a full scan there but you can also specify another scanner. Uh, then what you do is, is stick a scanner in that network that, um, so you, you put a Nessus engine in that network and you connect to that engine and it scans locally. So you have to buy two Nessus licenses or get open fast. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's no problem. You can just separate that out. I don't care that, that there's an overlap in IP because every, every job is in an isolated environment. Any other questions while we wait for, for the scanning to finish? Um, you can not very easily in this version but if you'll contact me afterwards I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Um, the second version that we're working on will actually have a man, ha, actually have an upload function so that you can take your scanner output and upload it as well as a manual finding category where you go okay I tell Netted to this port it's confirmed and, and input that. So here's what a, what a Necto scan looks like in Secubus. Again it, it, it looks pretty similar you get the 14 lines of output that are normally in a single finding, uh, single plugin in, in, in Nessus, you now actually get each line of Nikto output as a separate finding. So um, it's running a little bit quicker than I, uh, I really anticipated. Um, where do you get it? Go to secubus.com. Um, I'll be taking some questions then. I have one other thing. You saw C. Lulus. I ripped the shirt off his back. So, anybody willing to? I, I tr said I would try to make Christian Riley wear it, but he bluntly refuses it. 
So who's willing to take that off my hand to you for a nice? It says uh, number one security consultant. <laughs> You're not wearing it. <laughs> Okay, thanks.